Okay, I am calling to order the meeting of the Communications and Water Efficiency Committee of the Board of Directors for today. It is November 16th, 2022, and our first item of business is to call the roll. Good morning. Director Bragman? Here. Um, Director Schmidt, Schmidt is absent. Um, Director Russell? I read your lips. Um, Vice Chair Gibson? Here. And Chair Kohler? I'm here. Our next order of business to adopt is to adopt the agenda. And I have a quick question about the agenda. I'm a little surprised that this is only a communications update. We usually get an efficiency update. Can we hear a little bit from staff about what's going on here? Um, the, I, I think the plan was originally we were going to do the Medaus update today at the committee. And then we got a request from the board to do that at the regular board meeting. So we did move that item. I see. Okay. Um, I mean, at this point, I guess it's a moot point. I, I, I had thought, I think it's a, these meetings are only quarterly. So I guess I'm just going to re recommend going forward that since they are so infrequent, it's good to get that. I mean, the Medaus presentation, I support that. It was great to have that last night, but um, I think um, these, like I say, these meetings are infrequent enough that I think it's important for the board to get an update on where we stand with those items. So, I mean, it is what it is at this point. Um, so with that, I guess I'm looking for um, a motion to adopt the agenda. Move approval of the agenda. Second. Do we have any public comment on the agenda, Terry? Um, yes, uh, Mr. James Krajewski. I um, just wanna remind the public that we have the three, minute, um, three minutes to speak. So go ahead, let me allow you to speak, Mr. Krajewski. Uh, this is not on the agenda for general comment. Should I hold I just, that? I'm sorry, Mr. Krajewski, if that's the case, can I just ask you to wait? We are gonna have comment, public comment. Right now, all we're doing is adopting the agenda. So we're just Correct. looking for, so are, do you mind if we just go ahead and adopt the agenda and when then we can move to public comments? No, that's, I wanna follow the rules. All right, yeah. thank you. All right, all right. So any any comments on the agenda? There are none. Okay, then let's have that vote. Director Bragman? Aye. Director Russell? Aye. Vice Chair Gibson? Aye. And Chair Kohler? Aye. All right, we are now looking for public comment on items that are not on the agenda. Uh, Mr. Krajewski, please. Uh, thank you. I just wanted to comment, uh, since this is a communication uh, meeting in the title uh, about some comments from last night. There was concern expressed that uh, the district was trying to engage, engage the public with civility and that um, connecting with the public was important. But communication is a two-way street. As you all know, I have, uh, been asking the same question meeting after meeting of Dr. Uh, Director Kohler. I have never had a response from Director Kohler. So I'm not sure how this is either meets the standard of civility, nor does it meet the standard of communication for an organization. And I simply don't understand uh, somebody has been involved in communication within organizations in the past uh, why a district would let this go on and on and on without somebody saying, answer the question, or we'll figure a way to get an answer to the question, or we'll reach out to this person, or we'll do something. So when you talk about a communication, as far as I'm concerned, this has been a total lack of uh, communication. The only one with whom uh, I have had some contact uh, now several months ago, was General Manager Hornstein. And he, ans he actually communicated uh, quite well with me as I was satisfied with the communication and I suspect he was, uh, that was related to this issue. But it, he's not able to answer the question that I asked uh, Director Kohler. So I simply had a loss to understand. I don't. I thought I was being civil. 
I thought it was a reasonable question. Um, just blank stares from people. Uh, I've copied all the directors so they knew what was uh, exactly my questions. There was no confusion about that. That was weeks and weeks ago, uh, nothing. So if you're gonna make communication a priority, it needs to be two way. And I'm still looking for an explanation about this matter that's been going on. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Chair, um, we I, have one more I, speaker. Before, um, we, before we go on, I did say I would respond to Mr. Krajewski, but the election kind of got in the way, which <clears throat> I think Mr. Krajewski is well aware. But uh, before I'm termed out, I, I will get back to him to answer what clearly has been a repetitive and somewhat rhetorical question about the definition of rationing. But um, I will do so, I said I would, and um, I will be getting back to him before I'm gone. So um, I apologize for the delay. <clears throat> um, I believe the name is April Un Unkafer, Uncoffer. Hi, am I unmuted? Great. Uh, my name is April Uncoffer. I have a local water uh, conservation and recycling company in our community. And I just wanted to say that I also am disappointed that there won't be conversation today around efficiency. I joined in uh, and missed last night's meeting because I, I have such a limited time. I thought, you know, I'd rather come directly to the committee that's going to be speaking about efficiency, which also for me comes with conservation, although that title isn't in your, that name isn't in your title. Um, so I'm curious which, which meetings are best for me to attend if I have a deep interest in being a part of the conversation around Marin's adaptive and, you know, adoption um, and conversation around conservation and efficiency. I was thinking today would be it. I may have comments on communication, which is on the agenda. So I'll save that till I hear what you've said. But if you wouldn't mind telling me the best time and place to be involved in the conversation around efficiency and conservation, thank you for all you do. Um, um, thanks, April, for being here. And as you heard from my remarks earlier, I was surprised and disappointed. As a general rule, this is the right committee. Um, so hopefully, um, the um, that's what that's what we'll be doing here in this committee going forward. And um, the other place to be involved in this, you'll want to check on the um, the agendas for the board meetings that occur um, every other Tuesday evening. Um, because these items are often on that agenda as well. Those would be, that would be my recommendation. Um, also, I think Terry um, can give you more information about this, but you can access, there was quite a long conversation last night about this. Um, so you can access the recording of that meeting at your leisure. Um, so much more fun than Netflix um, online. So um, I'll, I'll just, um, since we're not agendized to discuss this, I don't wanna go any further, but um, you can be in touch with the board secretary if you have any troubles um, accessing that recording. I hope that's helpful. And I'm sorry about today, I really am. Do we have any other comments that are not on the agenda? There are no further uh, speakers. Okay, I believe that brings us to our next agenda item, which is an adoption of the minutes of the last meeting Chicago. Do I have a motion, guys? Move approval of the minutes. And I need a second. Second. Thank you. Do we have any public comment on approval of the minutes from the August meeting? There are none. Okay, then we need a roll call. Director Bregman. Aye. Director Russell. Director Russell. Aye. Vice Chair Gibson. Aye. And Chair Kohler. Aye. Okay, um, uh, we are now on to the communications activities update. Uh, good morning, directors. Uh, Adrian Martins, communications public affairs manager. Let me just share my screen here. All right. Um, so I will be providing the communications activities update today. Uh, we will be 
focused in three areas. Uh, first, I'll give an update on our progress on our strategic communications work plan. Uh, really just gonna focus in on the highlights today. Uh, it won't be comprehensive um, as it is a fairly big plan, as you know, from past meetings. Um, and then we'll do a review of our digital uh, analytics report for our um, outreach activities on digital platforms. And then we'll briefly um, chat about uh, what's ahead for the communications team. Uh, so to start with our uh, strategic communications work plan progress update, um, I'll give just a little background review since it's been a few months since I was last here. Um, as you may recall, uh, I did present the work plan to the board back at our May 25th committee meeting. Um, this is an annual work plan, um, and we did implement that uh, beginning with the new fiscal year uh, on July 1. And there's uh, tactical actions in nine different key areas, uh, which include content creation, collateral development, branding, digital presence, uh, emergency preparedness, internal outreach, paid um, and earned media, um, and community events and partnerships. Um, and then at this point, we've got about 60% of the work plan um, in progress or else completed. And when we say in progress, they're in various stages, um, but we have uh, knocked off a number of items from the list, which is exciting. Um, and then just a quick review of our objectives for the work plan. Um, we aim to elevate awareness of marine waters operations and values. Um, we wanna enhance our content. Um, be thoughtful about the timing and the way we deliver that information to our audiences. We want to strengthen our brand um, and consistency, uh, not just in our messaging, but in our look and feel and how we present ourselves and our outreach to the public. Um, we want to increase our positive coverage for Marin Waters digital footprint, and that's both for the platforms that we control um, and those that we do not. Um, and then we want to improve our online customer access to district services and also to our public meeting documents and records. Um, and we wanna ensure that we're prepared um, when we need to communicate during an emergency. And so moving into our highlights of uh, recent work uh, that we've completed or that's in progress, uh, we'll start first with um, a look at some of our work on improving our online customer experience um, and this is something that is currently in progress. Um, we are working to secure our agenda management system for the district. Um, this is a really big project. And I'm pleased to say that this week, we're actually finalizing um, contract with um, a vendor uh, to really get underway with doing the work to bring this online um, so that the public has the benefit of a better way to search for meetings and records and documents. Um, as Director Kohler was just trying to um, instruct a citizen on how to find a video online, uh, we hope uh, once we have this live and um, public facing, that'll be much easier because um, it'll all live in one place, every meeting, every video, every document. Um, and what I have on screen, um, and I should back up by saying we've spent the last few months researching different tools, um, doing demos, uh, talking with other agencies that use agenda management systems to really find what would be the best and most cost-effective cost fit for the district. Um, and also work best for our staff because it does uh, change our internal workflow for how we produce agenda packets for all of our meetings. Um, but what you see on screen is an actual uh, sample from another water agency who is using the same tool that we're working to acquire. Um, and so a couple features of this tool, you'll see you can toggle between the upcoming meetings and the recent meetings. Um, and then once you're on that, right now it's showing the recent meetings list, you have all of the recent meetings that have occurred, um, the date, the time, um, it also has all of the agenda packets and the video uh, recording is posted there as well and the minutes if they're published. And the same is true when you go to the upcoming meetings list as well. Um, and then you can also filter by meeting type if you wanted to look and find all of the past documents for community uh, for communications and water efficiency meetings, you could simply select that meeting and it would filter that out. Um, and then just one more little thing we'll show about this, uh, the thing I'm most looking forward to, um, but I think is something that members of our public that we've heard from previously will um, be happy to hear as well. 
so when you actually click into an agenda, this is what it'll look like now. It's your same agenda that we've always had and they'll be numbered out. But instead of having to go and scroll through sometimes over 100 pages and a PDF uh, agenda packet to find the staff report for an item you might be looking for, it's now going to be linked right before, below that item in the agenda and any associated documents that are a part um, of that item as well. So uh, we're, again, just getting that finalized with the vendor, the agreement this week, and we're going to start the internal process of um, uh, bringing that into our workflow, and then at the same time, um, working on what the public facing side will look like, and it'll all be integrated with our website as well. That, that is a great improvement. <laughs> yes. Yeah, very exciting. And I, I do yeah, want to give a lot of credit to our board secretary, Terry, because um, she she did a lot of the research and calling other agencies and kind of um, really moving this forward. So yeah. kudos to her and there's yeah. more work to go. Very good. Um, and then uh, another area I want to highlight is we've really been trying to do more with telling the district story. Um, we've kind of focused that effort uh, more recently in kind of these four main areas. Um, that's the journey of our water, what happens uh, to get it from our reservoirs to your tap, um, and then really looking at our key infrastructure maintenance and enhancement projects um, and, and telling more about those and why they're so important um, and the value of those investments. Um, and then uh, doing the same with our watershed resiliency and fire protection efforts, um, and also continuing to tout our innovative programs um, to promote uh, water efficiency in our community. And so to look a little closer- Be before, we, before we go, I, I tried to ask a question, but I was muted. Oh, I'm later. sorry. So yeah. On the previous slide, um, the one about the, the links, are those links permanent? Yeah. I mean, um, they yeah, last so basically forever? Yeah, correct. Okay. So they'll always be on there. Because mm -hmm. I know a lot of times this kind of stuff, you go to go to the link and it says not available or something like that. Mm -hmm. No, because you know, so, it's been moved where it's stored. Yeah, that's a that's a great question. And one thing that is going to happen with um, the transition to this new agenda management mm -hmm. system our records that all live online, um, our current board document records, are going to transition into this portal. I um, mean, it's a cloud-based portal, but everything is housed in here, and all of the agendas, once they're published with the links, those links won't change. Good. And where does the where does it live? Uh, it's a cloud-based system. Um, yeah. Who's cloud? Oh, uh, Civic Plus is the vendor we're moving forward with. Um, they work with a lot of government agencies. Um, they have kind of a suite of different project uh, products, but um, uh, we'll specifically be using MuniCode. Um, that's the project. So we have like a YouTube channel equivalent that we get assigned that you go to us and we have a spot on their their server? Um, I'm not sure if that's exactly the way to describe it, but... That's similar. Um, yeah, it, it's ours. It's yes, it's ours. Um, and again, once the agenda is published, then that information doesn't change. If something were to change, we'd obviously republish the agenda, but the links will stay live forever. And how much is the cost? Um, I, roughly. The first, yeah, roughly um, in the first year, uh, it's about seventy one seventy one hundred dollars. Um, for the startup, it costs a little more to do the work to get it going. And then after that, um, it's about $5,000 a year. I think it increases slightly in year four or five. Um, so it's a very affordable product. Um, mm. We're a smaller agency and they do have kind of a tiered system. Um, and so uh, we fell into a fairly cost effective range and we're happy with where we ended up um, yeah. and hoping things go smoothly. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Um, all right, uh, here, okay. Um, so as I was talking, what, uh, we've been focused on telling the story of the district more. Last time I was at a committee meeting, um, we had shared that we had produced a Your Water's Journey piece. At that time, it was a handout. Um, we had just, uh, we did that in-house. It was illustration of how your water, water travels uh, from rainfall all the way to your tap. Um, and we've now done more to work with that piece and developed a web page, um, which you'll see it's uh, 
a little video file that's scrolling through what that looks like. And it kind of breaks out the steps of the water journey. And then um, we did um, taking feedback uh, that we've heard from board previously, um, included uh, the tie-in of our Sonoma water supply so that we're capturing both our imported water at 25% as well as our reservoir uh, water um, when we talk about uh, the journey of our water and uh, we wanna make sure we're capturing all of our supply. <clears throat> Um, and then, of course, that web page um, is great, but we want to make sure people are aware of it. So we've done some work to get the word out about that and really talk more about our water's journey and some of our communications platforms. Um, we did feature it in our winter on the waterfront bill insert, um, and we also put it as a highlight in our October uh, e-news. Um, we now have it incorporated into our District 101 presentations um, when we're doing those out in the community, or we had a couple board members do some recently as well. Um, and then we've done some social media work to promote uh, the water's journey piece. Um, and as we think about more uses and ways we can maximize um, that the water's journey uh, information, we're talking about doing some educational signage uh, potentially that we could uh, put up in our customer service lobby. We've identified some uh, wall real estate uh, where there's room uh, to really kind of maximize how we message to our people when they come into that point of service. Um, and then we're looking at some display signs that we can use at our outreach events as well, um, as that's a really great way to engage with the public in um, a community event setting. Um, and then a little bit longer term, but we're looking towards potentially early spring um, to begin work on our district storytelling video short. Um, I talked about this a couple meetings ago, but we really have a vision for uh, trying to, to show uh, in picture and video picture um, uh, the journey that uh, customer waters takes uh, to get to their tap. Um, and our long-term plan with that is to use it in a range of ways. We do a lot of in-classroom work, so it would be a great thing to be able to uh, have our staff take out with them when they're giving classroom presentations, um, to use when we're doing presentations to community groups, um, and then to also utilize on our uh, digital platforms and our website homepage. Mm -hmm. And then turning our focus to infrastructure maintenance and enhancements. Uh, we've been working really closely with our uh, construction management team lately to really capture more of the work that they're doing out in the field um, and you know, getting better imagery. Um, and they've done a great job of helping uh, supply us with some photos uh, when they're out in the field, um, which really helps to create more engaging content. Um, and, and we've been trying to capture, you know, the importance of those projects and why we're doing them. Um, we heard from Mark Cossere, um at a couple of weeks ago at a board meeting, going through some major recent CIP milestones um, and projects they completed. And uh, we did something similar in highlighting those in, in a September issue of our uh, e-news. And um, we also, uh, at the last meeting, I had shared that we had published our uh, CIP program map online and a new CIP landing page, and uh, we did highlight that in our winter on the front on the waterfront bill insert as well. Um, and here's just a look at some of the social media work we've done to hone in on a couple um, of specific projects that we've done uh, or that the districts completed recently. Um, we shared uh, the importance of our corrosion control program um, and why that's necessary. Um, and we highlighted our emergency generator project and during fire prevention week, which is the second week of October, we also highlighted our fire flow program and the importance of that and uh, what those taxpayer dollars do go to. Um, and We've got a couple things that we're uh, we've brainstormed for upcoming. Uh, we want to kind of highlight our how our water mains get cleaned, and um, you know, really work with our staff to, from their perspective, uh, show you know what goes into that operation to make that annual uh, effort happen. Um, and then we also feel that we can incorporate our infrastructure maintenance and enhancements into our district storytelling video short that we hope to begin in the early spring as well. 
Um, and then similar to CIP, we're doing a lot with our watershed resiliency and fire protection efforts communication right now. Um, last time I was here, we had just published our new watershed uh, resiliency and fire protection web page, uh, which really is a great resource with tons of information about all of the efforts that are happening out on the watershed. And we did a lot of work with the watershed staff to put that together. And now we're um, when we're communicating out to the public about it, we're kind of taking bite-sized pieces of that information um, to really highlight these different aspects of our uh, forest health vegetation management efforts and then pointing people to that resource for more information. Um, and so there's a couple samples here of um, some of the highlights from recently from our e-news as well as um, our on the waterfront bill insert as well. And then... Um, we, uh, gosh, it's, I can't remember when we did this now, it's been a couple of months, but um, we did pull together uh, our watershed team, um, a number of stakeholders, uh, local and state, uh, regional and state stakeholders, um, as well as our assembly member, uh, assembly member Levine and a representative from Senator McGuire's office to tour the watershed and really highlight the work that they've been doing up there around fire protection. And um, we took that opportunity to do an exclusive invite um, uh, to the Marin IJ and got a reporter and a photographer to be out there. And it was great for them to hear from all these different representatives at once, talking about a lot of the collaboration, um, some of the funding uh, that uh, has been granted to Marin Water uh, to make these projects possible. Um, and we got some great coverage out of that um, in the IJ, which I've got here on the screen. And then um, here's a couple samples. We're really trying to show that we don't just use one method to do vegetation management work up at the watershed, that our staff um, and contractors are utilizing many different methods. And here we're showing our mechanical work, um, also some recent goat grazing that was done. Um, and then uh, next uh, will be looking at, we're, well, we're actually starting to do some planning around prescribed fire um, as another method. And um, I know that the watershed at the watershed committee in September, uh, Sean Horn shared with the board that um, uh, they have produced a burn plan and I know it was reviewed at that meeting. And so we're kind of taking the next step in the process and preparing our outreach material. Um, and are working closely with Marin Fire so that when we are at a point where we're ready to do a prescribed fire, we have all of the communication tools in place to do that. Uh, we know how important it will be to notify residents in advance. We want them to know what to expect, why we do it, um, what conditions are in place when the decision is made to do a prescribed fire. And so uh, we're working closely with a number of stakeholders on that right now. Um, and uh, it's really uh, any communication that we would put out uh, for a prescribed fire, uh, if one were to be called, uh, it would be co-authored with Marin County Fire. They would actually conduct a burn on the watershed, um, and we would support that communications. Um, and it would be a two-phase messaging approach. Um, if we knew we were at a point where we were close to potentially doing a prescribed fire, we would want to let the community know um, that we were working to reintroduce prescribed fires on the watershed. Um, and here's what they could expect. And if um, on the, you know, these are the conditions that have to be in place um, and that they would be notified uh, two days before um, of the actual date and time that it would occur. Um, and we're going to be, uh, we're actually in the process of preparing a number of templates so that we really have a toolkit ready to go um, if and when that date comes um, so that we can act quickly to notify the community and give an, um, plenty of advance notice. And so some of the uh, agencies that we're working with include the County of Marin, uh, One Tam, State Parks, National Park Service, and then uh, local cities and towns. Um, to, and that would be to make sure that they can help us to amplify the messaging um, if we were to move forward with a prescribed fire. And then some of the templates that we're creating now to be ready for that are news releases, Nixel alerts, um, letters for the adjacent neighbors to the watershed, uh, e-blast communications, social media, and signage. 
Um, and you'll see on the screen, we've got some FAQs. We have a lot of web content that we're also developing. And that way uh, we're ready to go um, whenever we have the conditions that allow for Marin County Fire to make the call to do a, fire, a prescribed burn. You're aware of the sensitivity about this, I presume? Oh, absolutely. Uh, and Jack yeah. will probably speak better to this than I, but my vague recollection is there was a real problem with the prescribed burn years yeah. ago. I think that's partly why we're taking such a proactive approach to the okay. communications on this. Um, we are certainly aware of the communication or of the sensitivities. We've talked a lot with other agencies um, who are already or have recently uh, initiated prescribed fires. Uh, we're watching the messaging that's going out. There was just a nixel this weekend, um, just about some controlled burning, a little different than a prescribed fire. Um, you know, just to see what's being put out there, what other communities are doing, uh, what's the sentiment so that we're ready and can manage that. But yeah, that good point. And we're definitely uh, trying to make sure we cover all bases. Uh, to yeah. I, I think Larry is referring to a defined group of people who are simply against any prescribed burning. And you probably have already heard from them, but you certainly will if you haven't. You know. Um, yeah, and I, I've talked to our watershed staff. I know there are some sensitivities in that way, too. Um, I think that's partly why it's important we're trying to show this is um, prescribed fire is just one of many methods that the district uses for vegetation management. Um, and, you know, we'll continue to reinforce that message. And um, there are some benefits to prescribed fires. And um, I think some of the content we'll develop, you know, we'll definitely be keeping that in mind and make sure that that's woven in there. I don't know that it'll satisfy everyone, but we want to at least make sure we're answering the question. Mm -hmm. um, all right, and then moving on in our storytelling journey here. Um, so lastly, we have really focused on um, uh, also highlighting our conservation programs um, and the resources that we've made available to the community. Um, we just wrapped up uh, kind of a pilot we were doing with Slope Garden Center and UC Master Gardeners to offer um, a gardening webinar series. And so Slope Garden Center actually hosted the webinars and UC Master Gardeners ran them with our staff participating to talk about our resources and our rebate programs. Um, and those were uh, quite successful, uh, both uh, webinars had over uh, nearly 150 registrants, which was really great. Um, we did do some advertising in the Marin IJ uh, for that webinar series. We also um, have done some ads with Marin IJ uh, just to promote our gardening resources uh, in general. We have our gardening resource uh, center website, um, which has this curated information from all these different agencies uh, that our staff have collected into one place. Um, and so we continue to push that information as folks plan for what their yards and landscapes may look like next year um, and make sure that they're using water efficient choices as they do that. Um, and then uh, we got some great coverage uh, a while back in the Marin IJ, a retired uh, editor of the paper actually participated in our Cash for Grass program and had great things to say about the program, about working with the staff and about the end product. And we worked with PJ Vermeer, the, um, mm -hmm. the reporter for that story. Uh, to put that together, give her the information on our cash for gas program. And, and that was a really nice piece. And uh, PJ did express interest in doing more with us. Um, she covers kind of like garden and lifestyle section. Um, so we uh, look forward to future opportunities to work with her. Um, Adrian, and, one, yeah. one, one suggestion I heard, which I thought was pretty good, mm -hmm. was you could do like a uh, a landscape of the month or landscape of the quarter to Ooh. kind of, uh, you know, make it regular. I mean, yeah. maybe not competition, but, you know, so that folks would start yeah. to uh, be inspired. I don't know. Yeah, get some yeah. feedback and, and show these success stories on a regular basis. Yeah, I love that. Thank you. All right. We will take that back to the drawing board. Um, 
All right, and then uh, kind of some of the things that we're looking at next, uh, working with our water efficiency team is redesigning our customer assistance program kit. Uh, right now it's a plastic bag, um, a kind of lackluster uh, single panel paper. It, it need, um, we're looking to give it some new energy and also looking at doing away with the plastic bag. Um, and uh, using something different to house these materials, we actually think we could maybe get double use out of the buckets that we distribute. Um, and so we're brainstorming around that and look forward to doing to getting that together over the next couple months. Um, the other thing that we're looking at is uh, producing a welcome mailer uh, that we could send out to new water customers, uh, introducing them to the water efficiency programs and services that are available. Uh, we might take that even farther and talk not just about water efficiency, but about other areas um, of uh, the district that we want to make sure they're aware of our efforts on the watershed. Um, so uh, still more brainstorming to do on that, but it's something um, I've talked with our water efficiency manager about, and we look forward to getting that going. Um, and then go, uh, moving to our quarterly analytics report. Um, so just here's a snapshot of our uh, digital performance. Uh, this is August 3rd through November 3rd time period. Uh, so we're at 169,000 views during that time on our website. Uh, that's actually a little bit down from where it was, or about 10, uh, over 10,000 views down from last time, kind of trying to figure out what some of that might be. Um, though our engagement did increase, so that's the average time that a user will spend on our uh, on a web page, one minute, 22 seconds. That was actually up by about five seconds. Um, and then we did have a little bit of shifting in our top five page visited. Um, our water watch moved from fourth to third, probably because we've had some recent rains. Um, that definitely gets everybody excited and running to that page, um, or at least those that follow it. Um, and then new to our top five is our Your Water page, which is now where we are housing uh, the water journey piece. Um, and so people can learn more about uh, where our water supply comes from. Um, and that actually replaced our water rules, which had been in the top five uh, throughout the water shortage emergency last year and through the first <clears throat> several months of this year. Um, and then I did want to note, uh, you'll see our users by device. Uh, our, we have a very computer based user or computer, our users are uh, definitely using computers uh, more than their mobile devices to access our website. Um, and I did note on here, industry average um, uh, has uh, mobile users at 50%. So we are far below that. And that's just something that's not a bad thing. It's just a good thing to know about our customers that they are on their computers, not their phone when they're accessing our information. Um, and then looking at our uh, email campaigns. So Marin Water E-News, uh, this continues to be um, a great communications tool for us. We have very high open rates and you can see industry standard 32.5 for the number of subscribers we have. And we're well above that in October, we actually had our highest open of the year at 52.4%. Um, and in that issue, we were uh, highlighting our water supply uh, strategic assessment. Um, and we uh, also, that was the issue where we highlighted our CIP work um, and some of the recent accomplishments. So cool to see that that was the highest. Um, that was a great issue. And then our weekly watering schedule, um, you know, our subscriber base, we're going to work more on that this next year. Uh, we've now closed our uh, Pause that for the year as we've recommended irrigation systems be turned off at this time. Um, but we have a very high open rate among the subscribers that we have around uh, just over 1900. Um, so that's doing well too. And we know those that use it um, really are using it and it's a, um, a productive tool for them. Um, and then looking at our social media channels, um, so on here, you have kind of a snapshot of our followers, how many posts we had and the success of our reach um, over the last three months. And then we've also placed our top post um, of the quarter in here as well. So our CIP, uh, a highlight of our CIP work was our top Instagram post. Um, 
we on Facebook, it was a happy Halloween post, but it was actually kind of clever. Um, we wrote it about, uh, you know, that, that it can shape, it can shape shift. It has the ability to regenerate certain life forms. Often it passes silently beneath our feet. This is no ghost or magical creature. It's water. Um, so kind of a fun play for Halloween, um, but that was our top post there. Um, and Twitter, uh, strategic water supply assessment um, and promoting our upcoming meeting was our top performing post. And then next door, uh, our watershed recreation management plan, um, <coughs> promoting an upcoming meeting for that process was our top post. Um, and our membership total on Nextdoor, and I should say that's not ours, that's just the total number of members, but it actually grew from 2,000 subscribers since I was last here reporting to you guys uh, to now. So in three months, there are 2,000 new neighbors on Nextdoor within our service area. Um, so that platform is growing very quickly. We continue to have very good engagement there. Um, I've said it before, I'll say it again, I'm, I'm surprised that hasn't always been a place that's been as successful in uh, my past my work I've done in past agencies. And so um, we continue to use that frequently um, for getting out information. Um, this is really, these are really pr impressive um, analytics. Um, Adrian, thanks for providing them. I, I'd recommend being a lot more active on Nextdoor. I'm, I'm actually still shocked that you're getting as much action as you are on Facebook, since I don't know anybody on Facebook anymore, but I guess some people are. Next door is definitely, it seems to me in Marin, the social media channel of choice. It's also where the district has been misrepresented the most. And I know we've talked about that a lot and there's a limit to what we can do, but I think the more the district can be um, active there constructively, the better. So to the extent that you can, it looks like you did 18 total posts there. I'd strongly recommend doing you know, considerably more, especially since you're doing larger number of posts on these other mediums because um again the i mean you really do have a significant miss and disinformation problem on next door there are folks who are actively engaged in um you know just saying things that are untrue about the district and about what it does and its policies and um again i understand you can't counter that directly but given the membership it does seem to me that making greater use of it um in terms of putting out positive and accurate information about what the district is doing um, would be helpful. Yeah, no, that's a really good point. Um, we'll look at upping our, our use of that platform. Um, yeah, I think at this point, you're right. The numbers speak for themselves and, yeah. and we'll see how that goes. Yeah. All right, so looking ahead to next steps, um, the comms team is going to continue our implement implementation of the strategic communications work plan, and we're going to continue to meet with our various district teams to support uh, any projects that come up. Um, obviously, continuing to work through um, some of those big ticket items like the agenda management system and our prescribed fire advanced outreach planning. Um, and then uh, we're also going to be shaping our communications plan for the rate setting process and, um, you know, our goals for that process is to ensure that our outreach is transparent and accessible um, and that people are able to obtain all of the information throughout the process with ease. Um, and we want to ensure that our customers um, really understand the challenges that are facing the district and the basis for our funding needs. Um, and so as we look at putting that outreach plan together, um, it's going to have a range of different components to it. Uh, certainly, um, there'll be our normal, regular, and special board meetings and ultimately the public hearing, um, but we'll be doing um, you know, more informal customer workshops to really get into the information with our customers. We intend to probably do both in-person and virtual meetings for those. Um, we'll be looking at key stakeholder engagement opportunities to make sure we're meeting with um, uh, the right uh, organizations and groups that we want to get in front of. Um, we'll have digital outreach. We'll be keeping in touch with the news media during different milestones throughout the process. Um, we will have uh, print communications. Obviously, we will produce the Prop 218 notice, but we'll be going above and beyond that with bill inserts and other communications, uh, printed communications to our customers. Um, and then we'll, uh, really important to the process, we'll be making sure we have really good internal communications 
um, so that we can support our customers, no matter who they call or reach in the district, um, so that they're uh, directed to the right information or provided the right information at that first touch point. And so that is um, a wrap on our look ahead and we'll open for discussion or questions. Okay, thank you so much. That was a fantastic presentation. Mm -hmm. It's impressive work. I am still concerned that the, the, the um, you know, as we've discussed many, many times, that the, um, you know, I'm not, I think this will all help, but I'm not sure you're as well set up as would be ideal in light of the rate increases that are coming. Um, I think it's fine and appropriate for you to do a separate strategic plan for that, but I didn't quite see how this plan was providing that foundation, but I just feel like we've talked about that a lot, so I'll just put that out there, but this is great work and a really well done um, presentation. Um, board, board comments before we go to public comment? I agree. Very impressive uh, job and presentation today, so thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, and I think um, the, the website is really a wealth of information. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, and the analytics reflect that. I, I just looked at it. Um, one thing I think would help under water use efficiency. Um, I don't really see where we have a portal for our conservation rebates and, um, and, and benefits. Yeah, that doesn't seem to be under that tab. And it just seems like that is something we really need to be emphasizing, especially given what we heard from Madaus last night about the efficiency or the efficacy, I should say, of turf replacement. So, um, you know, I think it'd be really helpful if we had a, you know, very well uh, framed portal for the rebates conservation program so that, you know, the average person just looking at the website or looking for that will find it a little <clears> easier. <throat> I, can't, I can't find it that easily myself. But. I 100% agree with you. Um, we are, I didn't, so today was um, not touching on every single thing we're working on, kind okay. of just highlight. <laughs> I did spend a lot of time on the website last meeting. Um, we are still working on a revamp of the homepage to really make the key things that we, we want our customers to find, not only the things that they want to find, but things we want them to find as exactly. uh, so put them front and center. And so we're in the process um, of getting that going. We really hope to have that published by the end of the year. Um, we want to have rate setting information front and center as well. So there's um, a lot of moving parts on that. Um, for now, I will say we do have our rebates all listed out individually on the homepage. Um, it's text-based. I don't love it. Um, it's something that we're working to adjust, but that was kind of a, a band-aid for now, just so that we at least yeah, have yeah. those with what the rebate is right when you get to the homepage. But yeah, totally it's a work in progress. And yeah, it's something we're eager to address. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. That's great to know. Um, I had thought that we did have exactly that kind of portal at one point, but I, I don't know, maybe I'm mistaken, but um, it's great to hear you're going to do that. And you don't, I think you know this, but just to put a punctuation point on it, lots of other water districts are great at this. I mean, they've really figured out how to do that. You go to their homepage and it's right there, you know, rebates, go. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some people want a lot of detailed information and that's fine. Some people just want to know how to find the rebates. So yeah. I really agree with that, with that point. Um, any other board comments on this before we go to public comment? Okay, public commentary. Yes, there is one public comment. Uh, Mr. Larry, oh, sorry, there are several now. Um, the first three, Larry Minikis, James Krajewski, and then April Ankafer. So let me put the timer on. Okay. And Mr. Minikis, go ahead, sir. Okay, good morning. Um, Adrian, thank you so much. Very helpful. And it's every communications is going in a good direction. I would also suggest that a, a, a hub, a portal, a, a library of documentation be considered so that if persons, new directors, what have you, are looking for documentation, it can all be found in one place. Uh, the other thing is, let's assume we're going to AMI and we're going to have a mobile app, we're going to have a desktop app. This offers a tremendous communications opportunity to be your central hub for reaching <clears throat> the community. We're seeing Facebook fall off, Twitter's a disaster, 
Um, uh, uh, next door is nuts, as we know. And this really could be the way of the wave of the future is, is using that, that AMI engine, not, not just to show how much water is being used and such, but how to communicate directly with um, customers. And with that, thank you so much. Thanks, Larry. Sure. Mr. Krajewski, please. All right, thank you. Um, I'm very pleased to hear that the agendas are being fixed so that they're uh, easy to read and to scroll back and forth. And I would urge that to the extent possible that it be applied to reports too, because they often have a number of sections and lengthy, lengthy uh, documents. And it's very hard to move from one section to another if you just want to, you, if you want to go from the index or something to a particular section, you've got to go through pages and pages and pages of material sometimes. So if you can apply that to reports, that would be great. Um, on the uh, water bill, there's still something I'm curious about that appears on there, and I hope that it can be clarified. Uh, it, there is a graph that compares water use to area average, but I have no idea what the area average is. I've looked around for that somewhere. And so uh, I hope that somebody will clarify what area average means on that bill and uh, possibly uh i if it some broad average uh it might be more meaningful to make a comparison to similar homes or similar businesses or whatever it is that's being compared uh on that and um the other uh, thing i haven't looked at the website uh probably for two three months uh to do searches for items but last spring when i was looking for where our water is used, it was a full-time job almost to go from one report to another report to dig through all of these things. Uh, there was no easy way to find where the water was being used and it would be reported in one way somewhere and often hidden in those lengthy reports. So I would urge that there be some portal that makes it easy to find where our water is used. As one example, I've heard that San Quentin is one of the largest water users in Marin. I was never able to find that data uh, on the website and I spent a considerable amount of time. So making that kind of, those kinds of searches easy would be very beneficial. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next speaker, um, Ro Ankafer, please. I would like to say that my uh, I keep cutting out you. Can you hear me? Arnett, are you able to hear me? Yes. <laughs> oh, thank you. First, it is an incredibly comprehensive impact that the water district is attempting. And so this communication report is incredible. That's the most important thing. With my limited time, I'd like to comment on highlights. The highlight that I felt was missing for me is I think it tells a lot about who MMWD is. I think it's missing the bridge of connection to the user. I didn't hear exactly where I am in, uh, okay, so in the work plan objectives, I wrote down the notes, in the highlight bulleted, engage community action and a lifestyle change. So like, if that is a highlight, the words we choose now stem from this purpose. And when we choose language and we really consider community, like engaging community action, I just think it's an, it's an important tweak to um, how everything else moves forward. And then on the slide about storytelling, again, in the highlights, I felt I was missing. Where am I in this story of the water? Because I love the graphics, but they're all big and esoteric. So because I work with water, I am adoring every single image I saw. Yet if I knew nothing about water, I would look at it and be like, okay, cool. 
where am I? So I think some of it needs to show that and also mm -hmm. the value of water. So as we talk about rate increase, I cannot believe how cheap water is. It's almost unbelievable. It does not reflect the true value and inherent importance water has in my life and my community. And so I would also love to see, uh, and that could be something that really preempts the public's acceptance of a rate increase, because right now we're not really increasing the rate, we're attempting to value water at what it's truly worth. So those are some things that come up for me also. Um, you know, this is slightly different. I'm gonna go into one detail that probably would have come up if we were talking about conservation and efficiency today. On your slide about innovative conservation programs and resources, I love the cash for grass. I would like to say, I really want to promote interdepartment collaboration, like how, what kind of incentives can we have to make water emergency preparedness, fire safety collaboration, rain tanks with life straws, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your thanks comments. For your, thanks for your comments. Um, you know, one quick thing, I don't know, Adrian, if you've got a response to that, but the, the two points that the last commenter just made that I think are really, well, you know, in particular, <laughs> worth, you know, really emphasizing, because um, we've talked about this a lot, that we have not been successful um, institutionally in conveying how inexpensive water is. I mean, you know, people simply don't know that their water is worth, you know, is that they're really on average paying a penny a gallon. And, cheaper than dirt. Yeah. And, you know, it's everybody's cheapest bill. And, you know, we've tried. I mean, I feel like the last time we really got into this was, you know, a long time ago. Um, so, you know, again, building on the comments I made earlier about needing to get a little more proactive about the rate increase, I think really um, taking the commenter's point about that and really conveying the value of water vis a vis the extraordinarily low price. Um, is important, especially since, again, we have this kind of toxic, you know, on and on and on in the media about how the bills are so expensive. Well, if they're expensive, then you're in tier four and you're using a boatload of water. But for the vast majority of people, um, it's not. It's, um, you know, right around, I think I've, I've seen over and over again that the average is a penny a gallon. And it's simply not a message that's been conveyed, I think, very effectively yet. So I'm sure that, um, that you could do that. And I was really intrigued by April's point. Um, which we've kind of, you know, kind of talked around, but I think she really put her finger on it, um, that our communications are not yet putting the consumer at the center. I think a lot of, so much of what you put forward this morning, you know, was great, um, really great. But I think I'd be really interested in your thoughts about that additional element to really help the consumer. So I'm not, I'm not saying it as a criticism at all, but I think it's a really interesting additional concept of really helping the consumer to see themselves you know, when they are engaging with our materials, whether it's our social media postings or the website or, you know, the newsletters or whatever it is. Um, there are no further speakers. Okay. Um, I think that brings us to the end of our agenda. Have a, is there anything else? All right. Have a good day, everybody. Okay. Thanks all. Bye. Thank you.